powered by the Montana Television Network. This is the Noon News from Montana's News Leader. Good afternoon and thanks so much for joining us here on the statewide Noon News. I'm Samantha Sullivan. One year after her disappearance, the remains of a Lolo woman are found and police are now treating her death as a homicide. The body of 27-year-old Marissa Serrano was found by a hunter along a forest service road back on September 27th. Crime lab testing has confirmed her identity. Serrano vanished a year ago after she walked out of a Lolo bar with a 62-year-old man. She was working the evening shift when she met Daniel Neep. Seemingly in the spur of the moment, her family said she decided to quit and go with the man. The man later told Spokesman Review after his arrest on an outstanding warrant, Serrano had returned with him to Spokane where he had rented an apartment. He says she then joined him on a trip to his cabin in Lakeview, Idaho, where he says Serrano started talking about coming back to Montana and left him while he was sleeping in his truck. Serrano's family stopped receiving her texts on September 14th of 2017, and the former University of Montana student was then the subject of an extensive and unsuccessful search last fall. Her remains were found in the same area where a ground and aerial search took place last year. At this point, no charges have been filed. Meanwhile, Montana Attorney General Tim Fox is asking the U.S. Supreme Court for permission to prosecute a suspect who raped a young girl three decades ago. Fox has filed a motion to overturn a 2003 Montana law which forbids filing rape charges after the statute of limitations has expired. The case in question dates back to 1987 when a man entered a Billings home and sexually assaulted an eight-year-old girl. It wasn't until four years ago that DNA taken from the scene was linked to a White Sulphur Springs resident, Ronald Tipton. Part of the long delay was because Tipton's DNA wasn't entered into the national system until 2014 when he was involved in a drug crime. Rape charges were then filed against Tipton, but this past July, the Montana Supreme Court ruled Tipton could not be tried because the statute of limitations had expired. Fox now wants the nation's highest court to get involved. Uh, this case is not only important for Linda Tokarski Glantz, who has gone public with her story as that eight-year-old girl who was so viciously assaulted many years ago, but it's important for all survivors of uh, sexual assault like this who, with new DNA evidence, could see uh, justice not only brought to the perpetrators, but closure for the survivors. This 1987 rape is the same crime that Billings resident Jimmy Ray Baumgard was convicted of and spent 15 years in prison for until DNA evidence exonerated him. Baumgard's case attracted national attention when the Montana Innocence Project joined in, eventually clearing him of the crime in 2002 and leading to a $3.5 million settlement from the state. The Supreme Court only accepts 60 to 65 cases per term, so it may be unlikely the Tipton case will be accepted, but Fox believes all 50 state attorneys general could file friends of the court briefs which would increase the likelihood the court will agree to hear the case. Fox says he expects to know by the end of this year and if successful he hopes to personally argue the case before the high court. In other news this afternoon a Stevensville area house is a total loss after it burned down late Wednesday night. According to Stevensville Rural Fire District Chief Rex Olson, the Emerald Drive house was under construction at the time. The fire happened northeast of Stevensville near the airport. Olson says crews were dispatched to a fully involved fire around 10 p.m. after the owners reported the fire. No one was injured. Several rural fire districts in the area responded to the scene. Over a dozen engines and almost 30 firefighters. Ravalli County Sheriff's officials responded as well. The cause of that fire is under investigation. And another milestone for the Keystone XL pipeline as materials are now making their way into Montana. We heard from some viewers up in Glasgow who saw truck after truck of pipeline being brought through the area. A spokesperson for TransCanada, the company behind the Keystone pipeline, confirmed to MTN the process of bringing in pipe has in fact begun in both Montana and in South Dakota. Glasgow Mary Mayor Becky Erickson says the company told her they could expect 40 to 45 trucks carrying pipe to go through town every day. The pipe will be stored along the route ahead of construction, which is set to begin this spring or summer. 
And now we're turning things to over to Ed in the Weather Center. Ed, it sounds like we're in for a bit of a cool down. That's for sure. Portions of the state that really saw some warmer temperatures for yesterday or struggled to it. There was a contrast across Montana. Readings anywhere from the 30s and 40s all the way to the 50s and 60s. 64 yesterday in Dillon. A lot of readings in the 60s through southern Montana, northern Wyoming, even 70 in Warland. But now we're seeing the clouds starting to build in around Butte. A chance of showers, even thunderstorms through southwest Montana. Here's a look towards Helena right now with some of the cloud cover and in Billings already some morning showers and more on the way and chilly enough for rain and snow. We'll take a closer look at the forecast details coming up in just a few minutes. Jed, well, on to the campaign trail this afternoon. The top electoral contest in Montana this year is for the U.S. Senate. This week, MTN's chief political reporter Mike Dennison is taking a closer look at the candidates in that race. Today, he looks at Republican challenger Matt Rosendale. The state auditor and insurance commissioner Matt Rosendale moved from Maryland to Montana 16 years ago, buying a ranch north of Glendive in far eastern Montana. It already has a substantial political resume in the state. He served six years in the legislature. He ran for the U.S. House in 2014 and won election as state auditor two years ago. Rosendale's professional background is real estate development. Most recently, he put together a housing subdivision just north of Great Falls. Rosendale says he got involved in politics at the urging of friends and neighbors who wanted a conservative voice representing them. Folks asked me to go in and run for office to reduce regulations that they found to be burdensome on them and their businesses. They asked me to reduce spending. They asked me to protect their property rights. They've asked me to protect their gun rights. That's what I've done. He won a four-way primary in June to become the Republican nominee to challenge Tester. Since then, he's had President Trump firmly in his corner, with visits to the state twice to campaign for Rosendale and go after Tester. It's time to retire liberal Democrat John Tester. <laughs> Rosendale has returned the favor, saying he's all in for helping Trump carry out his agenda. I think that the, uh, the entire agenda that the president has put forward is all very important. Um, it's basically to expand our economy, it's to reduce regulations and the burdens on our businesses and our families, and it's also to make sure we preserve our national security. Rosendale says Tester is just trying to slow the Trump train noting his opposition to the 2017 Republican tax cut bill and Trump's Supreme Court nominees, among other things. There's nothing wrong with being a counterbalance, and I, I really enjoy dialogue myself. But there is a difference between being a person who's going to be a counterbalance and someone who's just being an obstructionist. Rosendale will be easily outspent by Tester in the campaign, but so far this year, he's had more than $11 million in help from outside groups. Most recent polls show Tester with a slight lead, or rate this contest a toss-up. It will be watched closely on a national level. But there's also a third candidate, Libertarian Rick Breckenridge, who will profile tomorrow. Reporting from Helena, Mike Dennison, MTN News. Now this weekend, Rosendale, Senator Tester and Libertarian Rick Breckenridge will face off in a Saturday night debate that will be broadcast statewide. That debate is hosted by Jay Cohn and begins at 6 p.m. on your local MTN station. Well, in Helena last night, an Alabama man who spent three decades on death row for murders he did not commit shared his story at Carroll College. Anthony Ray Hinton was convicted in 1985 and released in 2015. Since then, he's written a book called The Sun Does Shine, which Oprah Winfrey chose for her summer book club. He also lectures across the country about prison reform, forgiveness and faith, and life as a free man. I, I look at my situation, people ask me every day, how is it that you're able to smile? How is it that you're able to forgive? I know that if I thought about and the men that did this to me, I could never enjoy life again. And I want to enjoy life. Whatever life I have left, I want to enjoy to the fullness. For more information about Hinton, including where to get copies of his book, you can find his story on our website. Well, thank you so much for joining us here on the Noon News. Coming up from Capitol Hill, senators are now reviewing the FBI report on Supreme Court nominee Brett Kavanaugh. More on that when we come back, but after the break, Ed's in with a full look at the forecast as we inch closer to the weekend. We'll be right back. You're watching MTN News with Samantha Sullivan. Storm Tracker weather with Ed McIntosh and farm and ranch news from the Northern Ag Network. This is the new news on Q2.
Montana's news leader.